What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I wanted to take a quick look at the all new Raspberry Pi OS release based on Debian Bullseye. Now this is actually a pretty big release and a lot of the stuff is definitely deep down, but we do have some really good changes to Raspberry Pi OS on your Raspberry Pi or your Raspberry Pi 400. Now straight off the bat, first thing I want to mention is you're going to install this just like you would with anything else. You can use the Raspberry Pi Imager and it is possible to totally upgrade to Bullseye, but it's not recommended. They do recommend doing a fresh install on a new drive, be it an SD card or an SSD. And right now I'm actually running this on a Raspberry Pi 400. We are clocked at 1.8 gigahertz right out of the box and that's also a new feature with this release or at least on newer raspberry pi 4s that support it now with the raspberry pi cm4 and the pi 400 we already have that newer bcm 2711 c0 revision chip but the newer raspberry pi 4s that are being manufactured also have that c0 revision and with bullseye installed it automatically takes it from 1.5 gigahertz up to 1.8 and a quick way to tell if your Raspberry Pi 4 has one of these revised chips, all you really need to do is take a look at the board and see if it has the dedicated switched mode power supply. Now over on the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website, they do have a picture here. They got a little more explaining it. I'll leave a link in the description. But this will be the fastest way to tell if your Raspberry Pi has that new CPU revision and if the stock clocks are going to go from 1.5 to 1.8 while installing Bullseye. Now with the CM4 and the Pi 400, you're not going to have any issues with it. It does have the switched mode power supply. But some of the older Raspberry Pi 4s, not any of them that I've tested, do have trouble overclocking. So when Bullseye is installed on those, your CPU is only going to be at 1.5 GHz, but you can always try overclocking manually and it'll probably work out just fine. Another cool new feature with this Bullseye release are update notifications. It'll actually notify you when there's an update available, and I've been really wanting this on the Raspberry Pi for a while. It does make life easier for newer users, that way you don't have to go into terminal every other day and do an update. It will prompt you and let you know when an update is available for this operating system. But other than that, when it comes to the performance of Bullseye on your Raspberry Pi, uh, there are a lot of quality of life changes, and there are some new little features in here that I wanted to take a look at. So first up, let's go to Appearance and Settings. Now one thing you might notice is we do have a little bit of a drop shadow, and I know it's hard to see here, you can see it right here with these windows. And this is because Bullseye is actually using a new Windows Manager called Mutter. Uh, I know it might be the placebo effect, but it seems like everything populates a little quicker. And this could just be in my imagination, you know, given a new release and everything like that. But it seems a little snappier, and I'm just running from a 64GB micro SD card right now. When it comes to the new Windows Manager, it's based on GTK Plus 3, so we should see some more improvements down the road on this. But right now, it's working great with Bullseye on the Raspberry Pi. One thing that I'm really excited about with the release of Bullseye for the Raspberry Pi is Chromium has now been upgraded to version 92 and hardware acceleration is available for YouTube video playback. So we should be getting much better 1080p performance and we're going to go ahead and test that out. We'll test 1080. If it doesn't work out too well, we'll go down to 720. But a lot of you might already know that with the older releases on the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, YouTube video playback wasn't the greatest. So right now, I've just gone full screen with it. This is just a Samsung HD demo, 1080p, and we're gonna make sure that we're at 1080. We're also gonna turn on stats for nerds and see what happens in full screen mode. Because when it comes down to it, if we were running 1080p in window mode, even on older releases, it does seem to work out much better than it does in full screen. We have our viewport and frames up here. We're at 1080p. So far, zero dropped out of four, but we haven't started playing yet. Let's go ahead and get this going. All right, so yeah, I mean, we're not that far into it, but we only have eight drop frames out of 800. Now, if I was to put this side by side with an older release of Raspberry Pi OS, we would be dropping a ton. I'd say we'd be at around at least 100 to 200 drop frames, full screen, 1080p, even with this 1080p 30 FPS video. And that's really what we need to check out next. We need to check out 1080p 60 because it's looking like 1080p 30 is definitely good to go with this new release. Let me move over to another video. And this one has really been my go-to test for little single board computers. This is Big Buck Bunny, 1080p, 60fps. We've got stats for nerds going up here. 
and let's see what happens. And I was afraid of this, yeah. That 1080p 60 is still just a little too heavy duty for this. Um, let's check 720p 60 full screen. And even then, with these 60 FPS videos, we're still going to get those drop frames. So we're not quite there with 60 FPS playback. 24, 30, 1080, full screen, 720. It's going to work out great. But uh, as you can see, out of 1400, we have 300 drop frames. I was hoping it would be a bit better with 60 FPS video, but this is really what we have right now. So far, the switch over to Bullseye on the Raspberry Pi 4 has been really smooth. Like I mentioned, I'm running on a Raspberry Pi 400. This was a clean install here. We're at the stock clocks of 1.8, and overclocking this a little more might help out with that Chrome video playback and 60 FPS 1080p, but it looks like it might just be a little too much, even with the hardware acceleration enabled in the new version of Chrome on Bullseye. But 1080p 30 is looking really good. If I didn't have that frame counter on, I wouldn't have noticed it dropped any frames. So yeah, I can't wait to see what other people are doing with this new release. And like I said, there's a lot underneath. There's a lot that we didn't take a look at. If you're interested in learning all about the new Bullseye release for the Raspberry Pi, I will leave a link to the Raspberry Pi Foundation in the description. But I wanted to get this quick video out of the way to inform some of my viewers that we do have a new version of Raspberry Pi OS for our Raspberry Pis, CM4s, and Pi 400s. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. All links for everything I mentioned are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.